Okay, so who would like to start off? Who's got a question for us? Yes. First, I want, just want to say thank you for coming here. It's been a great event for me. I'm just curious, before you graduate, did you all know exactly what you want to do after you graduate? Yes. <laughs> 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 What's the answer? I guess I will because I'm a recent graduate. I graduated in May and I still don't know what I want to do. Uh, that's one of the main questions that I get asked in interviews and I'm like, I don't know, I like corporate finance, but of course, you know, there's a lot of other stuff that goes into corporate finance. So it's kind of, um, just have to try your feet in the water per se and just see what fits with you. It's Brendan, right? Yes. And I also have to say that sometimes it just depends on what's out there at the time when you graduate. Because um, I, I graduated in MIS, but I do computer science right now. So it just depends on what opportunities are available for you when you graduate. Thank you. Brendan, I'll, I'll say uh, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. In fact, I took a test that told me, a career placement test, that told me that I should do what I do. And when I graduated, I didn't have the guts to do it. Uh, at 22 years old, I, I couldn't get my mind past who in their right mind is going to trust me with their money. <laughs> I just got out of school and everybody's going to know it. Uh, so I went the corporate route instead. And I was, I was successful. I worked my way up the ranks, but I was never happy until I finally left the corporate world and went and started my own practice. Uh, so I wish I could have those 14 years back uh, because uh, I'd be even further than I am today. I was going to say, you know, there's so much out there in the world that colleges can't even begin to try to cover in terms of jobs and, and different careers you can have out there. So I don't know that you could ever graduate and know exactly what you want to do. But I think one thing you should really be thinking about as you graduate is through your internships and what you've done, what kind of companies are you looking for? Because there's big four county firms that are going to be very high pressure, very stressful. Is that an environment you feel you can succeed in? Are you looking for something that's going to be more laid back, more family oriented, a family friendly type culture? So, you know, trying to look for that culture. And then also, is it a company, if you have the opportunity, where you could get a lot of experience and see a lot of different things? Ladies and gentlemen, Zach Gattel's in the room. Yeah! <laughs> dream job ends up looking like. But if you always think about your job in terms of the things you like to do and the things you don't like to do, and whether you get to do them a lot or you, have, or you never get to do them in the job you take, um, if you take a job where you like to do something a lot and you get to do it a lot, you'll be a whole lot happier. Take a job where you have to do something a lot and something you don't like doing, um, you won't be staying more than six months. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so next question. Come on, don't be bashful. One, two, come on. Yes. Yeah. I'm a management major, um, but I'm also fairly interested in uh, marketing and sales. Um, do you think like the management emphasis can be successful in that other um, industry? And do you have any um, examples of that happening? Everyone here is a salesman. <laughs> Nothing else we're selling you. Yeah. I'm a management major. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, really, it doesn't. Uh, unless you're like going for a public accounting job. That they kind of expect you to have an accounting major, but uh, you know, for the most part, it really doesn't. Uh, a business degree is pretty transferable, I would say. Right, sales manager, right? You know, so you're in sales, but you right. manage the staff. So you do really good in sales, and next thing you know, you're managing the team. So maybe that's for you. Yeah. Thank you. Next question. Come on, you guys have been like quiet all day. <laughs> I actually hear this quite a bit. People wondering whether they should go directly into grad school or no. take a job no. first. Great question. Our favorite fight here. Your favorite fight. Well, no, I mean, okay, that's the best answer. answer. Accounting's going to end up doing it, right? Because yeah. you have to just sit at the CPA. Yeah. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of people that have hired in a company that came straight out of grad school and gone straight to undergrad. 
they're almost in the exact same position, the same salary as anybody who's coming straight out of college. Because you don't have that industry experience, you, you haven't really done much in work experience, maybe you've got an internship or something, but you don't have that day-to-day -day office life and really working in the job, so you know, we're not going to put you in a, a second level analyst Position or anything like that as well. there, there are always exceptions. I mean, sure. WashU is a prime example. They have a three. They still have a three-two program, I believe, where you get an engineering degree and an MBA. Yeah. That's a different situation. Uh, but if you're going from a marketing degree to an MBA, uh, un unless unless you've got unless you've got a story beyond it, no, you want to generally take two or three days off, two or three years off. <laughs> <laughs> There is no reason you can't take some time off before the law degree starts. Don't take a degree just because you don't want to try out. Or because you might end up someplace big that will pay for it. You know, yeah. 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 Boeing pays for certain degrees, master's degrees related to you know, the business. So you might even change which master's you end up getting, but you, you, know, you might get it paid for by your employer. So Katie Coke has the best answer to this question. Is it depends. I hated night school. My dad said, while I'm alive, get the damn thing done. And so I just went through. I did go to the beach for the summer, but then I went back for two years straight. But then other people, their financial situation does not allow it. They may already have a family. You need to take time off. Some people get burned out. I'm just impatient. And so I just wanted it done. And that's how I got a job at McDonnell Douglas, because the guy who hired me said, you already have it. I don't have to listen to you complain about going to night school, and I have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Yes. If you're trying to switch from one field to another, would you say that you should stress on things that you've done in the past, or would you focus more on what you've done in the present? Because like me, I'm switching from accounting to IT. Um, what would you suggest there? Would I try to pull what IT knowledge I've gotten out of my accounting experience, or should I just try to focus on the specific IT-related positions that I've had? Anybody want to feel that one? Yeah. I would focus on, think about it in terms of transferable skills. So anytime you're looking at a job, you need to think, stop and think of it from the hiring manager's perspective of, if I were hiring that person, what do I care about? And they typically will not talk about, here's the technical experience I need. They will talk in terms of, here's the foundational skills and competencies I need to be able to be successful in that job. And very often, those transfer over from one area to the next. So the types of jobs that you've had in the past, find those um, examples in that experience that demonstrate that you have the skills and competencies that need to be transferable and use those and articulate that in a way that shows that you understand what those competencies are and that you understand how you would take that prior experience and apply it in the new job. Somebody want, somebody want to tackle that one? Zach. One quick one. We talked about, for those of you who were in the panel and other room that I was in, you probably already heard this, but <coughs> when you're giving your resume out, don't give it in Microsoft Word. Do it in a PDF. Because what happens when you PDF it is if I'm reading it on your, my iPhone, it's going to come through as you intended to present versus getting all jargled. Um, and I think in modern technology, a lot of people are very busy. They may be actually be reading it on the iPhone as opposed to on a computer actually turning it out, at least for the first time through. Um, and so you want that to be concise so that people can easily see that. The other thing is, too, is that it depends on your screen display settings. It makes it very easy to see if you've copied and pasted things in a Word document, um, whereas in a PDF, that's not as readily apparent. So just one more trick that you can avoid that. Primo, P-R-I-M-O, P-E-F. If you Google that, it's a computer program that will download to your computer and will basically set up a new printer to print PDFs. Perfect. Very simple. It's a free document. I use it four or five times a day. Okay, well, I got office too now. <laughs> We're going to finally upgrade the systems next year. Uh, if you want to identify a company, if there's a company that you want to work for and you're looking to figure out how to get it in, Delta Sigma Pi can get you that in. Here's how. Go to your vice president of professional activities. Say, I want to get a speaker from this department, from this company, to come speak here. You set it up. You find them. You invite them here. 
Your chapter conspires to make sure that you're the best person in the world. You get to greet that person, you get to talk to that person, you get a business card to call them up the next week, and you buy them coffee, and you now have an answer. Yeah, if you're a senior and you're not running for the VPPA position, you're you don't even have to run, just be on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of resumes, Katie's got some specific. Yeah. I shared this in my um, in my sessions on, on social media, but one of the things to keep in mind, uh, you all live in a wonderful age of technology and looking for jobs, um, and it means that recruiters are getting to your resume even when you're not putting it in their hands through online searches, um, through resume review, um, resume book searches that, from your career centers, and one of the tricks if you put. Um, They've used keywords, so we're looking for keywords that we want to know exist in your resume. Um, sometimes it's hard to work those keywords into certain sentences. It yeah. reads awkward, it doesn't work. The trick is if you put it at the bottom of your resume, in the footer section of your resume, in white font, um, it won't show up when they view it online, but it will get picked up by their online search. <laughs> so you end up, and it's not cheating as long as there are to your experience, don't go do accounts receivable or accounts payable or do something like that. Try and find something that's a little more broader. It's a lot easier to go from broader to narrow than from narrow to broad. So no matter what you're doing, that first job, if you really want a strong foundational first job, find something that's a broad kind of a skill set to work within so that then you maybe can get experience to a bunch of different things to figure out maybe what you want to specialize down the road. Please. The other thing I would add to that is make sure you're aware of the company culture that, for the companies you're looking at. Because like at Enterprise, at Enterprise Holdings, we promote from within. So it doesn't matter what entry level position you get in, if you're successful in that position and you work hard on your skill sets and get to know people and gain experience, you can move up in the organization regardless of what point you started at. Not all companies are like that. So it's important to identify the profile of the company, whether they promote from within that hire a lot from the outside, because that'll give you a gauge on your future opportunities. That's, that's the same with Boeing also. We now, if you come into an entry position, you're going to change jobs three times in two years so that you have cross training. So you may not start off with a job that you love, but you may end up with one. So <coughs> you're ready to be changed around a lot. How many of you work in restaurants and wait tables and things like that? Do you? I can't stress enough, I mean, yes, that's good for quick cash, but I can't stress enough how important, how competitive it is to find good, uh, good career jobs and how important it is for you to get industry-specific experience. Uh, I waited tables all through college, too, and it got me nowhere when I was trying to find a job. Uh, luckily, all my experiences through the fraternity helped quite a bit, though. Um, I'm seeing that more and more where students are having internships. Uh, even, even if you can't land a formal internship, for the summer, find go to a temp agency, ask for a job in the field that you're studying. And I wouldn't have a problem calling that an internship on my resume. Uh, you had a job in your field. Um, <laughs> Invisible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work when we were coming out of college. It was just it <laughs> so, um, one assumption I would make to that is, if you are looking, at, if you are a manage, a management manager, and you're looking for like that management trainee type of position, um, those types of roles, and to get your start in. Then actually your your experience either in retail or bartending or waiting tables those types of things I know for our claims trainee job which is our our ramp into management positions you tell me you are a waiter or bartender in college and I can almost guarantee you it will get you the job if you can show how you can parlay that and enterprise is very much the same way because it shows you know how to work with people 
It gives you a ton of experience and examples to draw on, um, and typically, especially in that, you've moved into roles that give you that kind of leadership experience, which is easier in a waitressing restaurant type of situation. So if you're in finance, accounting, you know, like that, and you're going that path, I completely agree. If you're looking for something more broad or more general, that experience is actually quite valuable if you use it the right way. You're assuming they're good waiters and waiters. <laughs> well, I don't have to serve the people I'm interviewing with. I just have to say I was good. <laughs> so one thing I would just suggest is that do what you did today. You should ask for help and advice. The one piece of advice that I'm going to give you about your career from now on is do that always, no matter what position you're in. Because let me just say, when you think about today, you sort of expose yourself to a little bit of criticism, some constructive criticism, I hope. But you know, the idea that you went in and said, I know I can do this better. There are so many people, and you know, in your classes and your groups of friends, who don't have the guts to do what you did today. So throughout your whole career, that's a really important thing to do, whether you're ready to change jobs or have your resume looked at by a friend. So don't just think about this is something you do when you're a student, but this is really a lifelong activity. And you know, your brothers are here to help you from now on. The other thing, I help review some resumes and getting to this point about you know, waitressing and being a bartender and stuff, don't assume that those humble jobs don't aren't important or won't resonate with your interviewer. Because you know, if we went around the room and told you all what our first jobs were, you'd be laughing. There's all kinds of stuff that people did to make money, to help finance their educations. And when you're doing those jobs, you're going to connect with a number of your interviewers. So talk about that with your career center, but don't just be bashful about saying, well, you know, I had a dress cutting business, or I did, you know, I worked at a hospital and I ran specimens around the hospital. That's what I did. My first job, I mean, yuck. But you know what? <laughs> it was a great experience to get this stuff. And don't hesitate to talk about the hard things you've done, because that will help you. And I have one more thing to say. I, I say you should also put service learning opportunities and courses and then volunteer opportunities that you do in college. So if you do have a humble job, they can see that you are also work getting career experience through your volunteer work and show your um, interest in your community. And that also says something about you. So there's more than one way you can go about getting experience if you can find that in terms of. Absolutely. On Susan's first point about asking the questions, where's Patrick? What did you ask me? I, would, I think I asked you just for like a piece of advice going through college and looking for the first job. So you could you could ask us questions like that. You know, what, when it comes to things like this, hopefully we'll keep doing this every fall. And, you know, you know things that based on people's experiences, you never know what you might pick up from um, stuff like this. Okay. Uh, a couple things. One, it's like if you're looking for a professional experience and you're a waiter or whatever job you're in, leverage the fraternity, leverage what you've done in this organization and your different positions and what you've been able to accomplish with those. Because that is, I have on my resumes of the professional experience. Because even though I'm not getting paid for it, and it's some, I'm volunteering my time and my effort, I am getting something out of this and I'm getting the experience. And that is, will set you apart from every other resume out there. And then the other part is if you don't know what you want to do, sit down and list out what your passions are and list out what industries you're looking at and then look for particular companies and then to you know come to one of us and let us know I'm looking at these two or three companies. Do you have any alumni that work in those companies? And we can connect you. And then you can sit there and talk about what culture's like, you know, what the day-to-day -day operations are like, and if it would be a good fit. And you might think of a, one company, and what you get out of it is a totally different thing than what you originally thought. So, you know, leverage everybody up here, leverage your alumni association, and uh, if you're looking in different cities across the U.S., we can get you in contact with those people as well. Do not limit your job search to whatever companies your career placement office puts in front of you because there's thousands and thousands and thousands of more opportunities out there for you. Anybody else? Well, we, we've all been where you're at, so it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? It's only been 20. <laughs>
Some of us actually remember. Of the 25-year <laughs> award winners, I'm, I'm happy that I'm the only one who got the gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> about my background and experience that I you'd like to hear from me before we're done um, only because I have we tell our hiring managers don't ever answer that question um, for the reason of it can set you up for like fumble mouth and things that you should never say to a candidate so you might want to just switch it a little bit so you don't freak out an inexperienced interviewer. yeah and let me just follow exactly what Katie said I am an experienced interviewer and nothing pisses me off more than that question <laughs> So my method is in between those two. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer's is more put you right on the spot interviewer. Uh, Katie's is more soft. Is there anything I can tell you? Uh, my method is if if I know that I have a skill skill set uh, or I've had some experience that's very relevant to that me doing well in that position, and it hasn't come up in the interview, I will say after I've asked them some questions, I'll say, do you mind? This didn't come up in the interview, but I think it's really relevant to this, uh, to, to my candidacy for this job. Yeah. Uh, I've got this experience, and I wanted to make sure you you knew that. Uh, and that way, I cover the same thing, but I make sure that I get it because you know, you can ask the question that Katie just said, but you know, depending on the the interviewer, they may or may not bite at that. My question uh, only works if you don't know whether or not you got to something. If you know you missed something, yeah. absolutely. Don's question will, Don's approach will work every That's time and it will not That's your chance to sell yourself at the end. So if there's anything that you think, uh, you know, some, some, some sort of achievement or job experience or uh, a specific skill, uh, you got, that, that's your last chance to sell it. Yeah. Uh, and you got to take that opportunity. I like Don's approach because we have structured interviews with preset questions and we can't just add on at the end. So Don's approach, helps with that for you. Okay. I, I, like it when, I like it at the end of an interview when somebody asks about the company, asks about my company, right? Do your research before you go into an interview. Yes. Read the current events with that. When somebody comes in an interview and at the end says, I noticed that your company purchased some, you know, such and such last month, what do you guys think? Anything like that shows that you're, you're doing your work, that you're interested in the company, you're not just interested in me giving you a job. So um, you could weave something like that into it. Totally agree with that. The caveat to that is, if it's bad news, don't run the set. But it's not your stock drop set. Well, you should be aware of that. Well, two more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we
was going to say one that I usually use is um, what is going to be one of the most rewarding things I'm going to get out of this position or that I will be receiving out of this position. The other, the flip side is in the first you know, 90 days, what would be one of the biggest obstacles you see in this position and it, is there things that I can do to help smooth through that transition? Um, for the professionals in the room, I'm sorry, what are the cur what's the current etiquette? How long should they wait before the thank you email goes out? Should it be immediately, two hours, the next day? Just that one. Just that one. Just that one. Just that one. Yeah, I, 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 I probably do two to three interviews a week a lot of times, and I may have gotten two interviews. Or thank you. Out of all of it, and I'll tell you, it does make an impression when, when that one does come through. And my recommendation is 24, simply because some managers, especially if you're at an event, kind of a thing where they've interviewed everybody on the same day, they may be making that decision quickly, and you don't want it if it, you don't want it to have gotten there a day late and then them go, oh, that made a good impression, but I already made my decision. So it's 24, 48 is fine typically, but don't don't wait longer than that. Um, I just wanted to comment on something. Know what industry or company you're you're interviewing with, because if you're interviewing a company that deals with reinsurance, know what reinsurance is, know what it entails, just a little bit, you know, and bestopedia, <laughs> make them bestopedia your best friend. Um, but basically just know something about what they do. And then also, like Kevin said, ask about that, ask what they like about the reinsurance side of their company or you know, the HR side, whatever you're interviewing for. One of the challenges of having a career panel such as this is when you get dozens of people that like to talk, you <laughs> tend to run over. Uh, so we are out of time. Thank you very much for coming. This is our 16th year doing this. What do you think? Should we go for 17? Yeah. Yeah.